Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Tuesday of the third week of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels, but you did not deserve it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, said this he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we heard the very beginning yesterday of Stephen's encounter with the Sanhedrin and uh, the fact that he kind of gave them a history lesson of how throughout the entirety of the Old Testament, the, the law, the prophets, the Psalms, there was this wonderful red thread of salvation through the Messiah that was woven into the whole thing. And he gets down to uh, the end of his, dis you know, his discussion. Basically, it was more of a, a homily, a sermon uh, before the Sanhedrin. He gets to his conclusion, and boy, he lets them have it. And that's where we begin today. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears. Now, they were circumcised physically as a part of the covenant. But what he was saying is that the parts that really needed circumcision, that really needed to be given to God, because circumcision was a sign of covenant, but while you may be physically in the covenant, you are not embracing the covenant in your heart or in your hearing. And basically, you're just opposing the Spirit of God. And at this point, I, I love, again, the way that Luke describes it, that... Uh, they were infuriated and ground their teeth. It was like, Argh! you know, they were so angry, so filled with hatred for what he was saying. He was confronting them, definitely. And uh, he was confronting them at a point where they really couldn't refute it in terms of what he was saying because he was basically giving them a dose of their own history. But they didn't like what he was saying, and they were ready to stone him, to get him, to kill him. And again, as he was in the midst of them in this meeting, again, we're still in front of the Sanhedrin. He looks up, and he sees a vision. He sees the glory of God. He sees the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And at this point, they cry out. They're, they scream at him, and they cover their ears. It's, it's, they, they don't want to hear him saying these things. It's like they, they don't want to be uh, uh, witnesses to what he was all about. They wanted to uh, just cut it off from their hearing and cut it off uh, from their midst. And so they, they rushed upon him, and they carried him out of the city. <clears throat> And can you imagine the amount of commotion through the streets of Jerusalem as they carry, you know, just, just a few words here. And that was, they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed him together. 
and they threw him out of the city. In that little phrase, they threw him out of the city, there's so much going on. He's being pulled out of the meeting with the Sanhedrin. He's being pushed through the streets of Jerusalem by an angry mob. People are watching this. Probably more and more people joining the the procession as they uh, take this man and take him out. Now, uh, one of the things that we need to remember is that uh, earlier on, Gamaliel was one of the Sanhedrin, one of the Pharisees that uh, was uh, challenging them to not to do anything to the apostles. And now, with Stephen, we see one of Gamaliel's students surface, and his name is Saul, who later becomes Paul. And when they threw him out of the city, uh, those that did it laid their cloaks at the feet of Saul, a young man. So here, Saul is incorporated into Luke's story at this point. And from now on, Saul is going to be peppered into our story and later probably he's going to be taking the lead as we see his ministry take place after his conversion. But here we see Stephen uh, basically giving up his life. He's being stoned. The, I can't imagine the pain because it's so gradual being hit with stones big and small. Some maybe uh, bloodying his head, uh, you know, bruising his skull, bruising his body. It's, it's just amazing to think of the, the torture that he was going through. And so in the midst of that, he finally just calls out. He knows that he is coming to the point of death. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And at that point, he fell to his knees. He knew that there was not much life left in him. And with his dying, dying breath, just as Jesus did on the cross where he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Here, he said, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And at that point, he died. Now, what's interesting is what comes next. One last verse actually the beginning of chapter 8, where we see uh, other works by a deacon, Philip, who goes to Samaria. But here we have in the persecution of, uh, we, uh, rather in the persecution of Stephen, the last verse saying Saul was consenting to his execution. Saul was there. Saul was saying yes. We don't know if he picked up a stone or not, my sense is that he probably did. By saying that he consented to his execution, there is that sense in which Saul probably participated. And if he didn't so do so by picking up the rocks, he did so by holding on to the cloaks of those who laid their cloaks at his feet uh, when they were going to stone him. And so this is a transference at this point of what is taking place. Stephen being a witness to Jesus Christ as he dies, a new witness is going to rise up. We don't see it yet because he is now a part of those who hate the church. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as we leave uh, the Acts of the Apostles, we leave Saul uh, as an activist uh, for the Sanhedrin, one who consented not only to the death of Stephen, but to the ridding of the world, of the church, the followers of Jesus Christ that at this point are called the way. And that's what he is going to purpose in his heart. And so this is a time of great drama 
and we're going to see some things beginning to happen that will uh, cause the expansion of the church uh, in a very powerful way in the next few days. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.